everything we've done has led up to right now. Right now. Because legacy are full of legends. You can become a legend today, boys. Put your stamp on history. Put your stamp on a legacy. It is going to take all of us, all of us, men, be not afraid. Do not be afraid to be a legend. Welcome to OPA Podcast, episode 25, and one of your co-hosts, my name is Jason, I'm ready to take Tampa O. Uh, my name is Wyatt, I never thought we'd get this far, Ogres? Griffin most. And absent today is one of our other co-hosts, uh, Laurence Guider. Um, today, first, first. we're going to recap um, the Wisconsin game that was held on Thanksgiving weekend on uh, the 31st. Um, sorry for the super late podcast for that, um, but I have not many comments. Um, yeah, it was a loss, and so move on. Yeah, probably. I don't think any of us feel great about it. I liked the first quarter. That was great. Anything after that, a race. Well, you're not wrong. It's like Jonathan Taylor. We know he's a good back, but you can't just only put five people in the box when he wants to run. That's just not going to work out. Yeah. Anyway, I could go on, but let's just leave it at that. Yeah. Yep. So moving on, um, previewing the Outback Bowl between the 18th ranked Minnesota Golden Gophers who finished 10 and 2 versus the number 12 ranked Auburn Tigers from the SEC which are 9 and 3 um, some key stats uh, in, t- in terms of just numbers so um, besides the records uh, Minnesota has the one extra win um, Auburn did finish the season out strong um, especially with their last game of the season defeating Ar- uh, Alabama in the Iron Bowl 48 to 45 um, when they were number five at the time. Um, their quarterback is a freshman um, who has been 200 for uh, 200 uh, att- uh, completed passes for every 351 attempted for 2,366 yards with a ratio of 15 touchdowns and six interceptions. Um, 15. 15 TDs, my bad, uh, and six INTs. Uh, their lead rusher is. Um, uh, Jay Whitlow, uh, 100, for 147 carries, 739 total yards uh, or rushing yards with nine t- uh, tutties. And then their leading receiver is, um, I only have their abbreviated first name, which is S. Williams, with 55 receptions for 801 yards and eight tutties. Um, in comparison, our leaders in all three categories is Tanner Morgan, Rodney Smith, and Rashad Bateman, respectively. Uh, with many more yards um, and attempts uh, per, per, uh, per their positions. Um, points per game were both pretty similar. Minnesota at 34.3, Auburn at 34. Uh, we've allowed 22.4. Auburn has about, allowed about 18.6. About pretty much 420-ish total yards, pretty similar. It's just that we do it through more on our end, surprisingly, on passing over rushing. Auburn is more balanced, um, and yeah, that's pretty much it from this total numbers wise between Alabama, uh, N- N- Auburn, and us. Ugh, I'm tired. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a long season, man. <laughs> Griffin's tired. I'm tired. Laurence is probably dead tired. <laughs> I can only imagine how tired Laurence is. Yep. So, at least it's a good end to the season, you know. Um, but I think Griffin was the one in terms of preseason predictions uh, that saw us going 10-2. and two. But uh, I messed up the last four games. True. Uh, but you had the closest record, so 10-2. Uh, and two. The rest of us thought we were going like 8-4, and 9-3-ish, so that's pretty good. I, I commend you on that, Griff. I know what I know. <laughs> you, uh... But the thing is that um, bowl game aside, this has been a pretty good season. Um, Ten wins. Um, we started off shaky, strong, pretty much from top of Big Ten play up until Penn State. 
and then of course the struggles in the end of the season but overall it was better than we thought at least what i thought getting 10 wins since 1904 1905 um tanner stepping up big time this season um after Zach tanner Hall. stepping up huge really hard to sell tanner short after this season totally um other than that i think it's, it's going to be a celebration, you know, going to the uh, Outback Bowl in Tampa, Florida. Um, I'm flying out there as well with the marching band, and I'm sur sure going to enjoy as much as I can being in the warmth down there and uh, just enjoy it because um, it's been a pretty good season, and I hope we keep moving, doing that from now on. But other than that, um, yeah, some things about Auburn scares me. Uh, if you guys didn't know, one of their best defensive linemen um, who's projected to be a first-round um, pick uh, is staying for this game on their D-line. Um, in terms of the Gophers side, amongst seniors, um, all of them are playing except for Kamal Martin, and Anton Riefer Jr. has also announced he is playing for the bowl game but has not announced uh, any draft uh, declarations yet. Hmm. I mean, I'll be... Um... Like if if he declares draft stuff, I'll be happy for him because you you want to build a program as much as it sucks to have someone leave in like a couple of years. Like that's when you know you have a successful program. Yeah, that's true. So I'm I'm a little torn on that, regardless. But I hope he stays another year because I think it would only increase his draft stock. Yeah, for sure. Um, so besides in terms of uh, players playing, um. As far as I can tell, uh, players-wise and coaches-wise, uh, we did lose Coach Jim Panagos, who our D-line coach. Um, he was poached away by uh, Greg Schiano. And to be quite honest, I'm not that sad that he's gone. Um, the D-line has sort of been a little more mediocre this season than it was last, just saying. Um, so I'm not upset about that departure. But course, the, the oh, what I would be most upset with is if on National Signing Day, we did not retain the commitment of Ja Joyner, who's a four-star out of Connecticut. He is the, I think it was Connecticut, he's like the number one recruit out of Connecticut, four-star, originally committed to Boston College. Some stuff went down, and he secured the commitment, or we secured this commitment with him, and he was Panagos's like commit, like he helped get him, and even with the transition of Panagos leaving to Rutgers, he still stayed true to the commitment. So, I would be a little bit more. I, I'm obviously upset. I'm not. Like, I'm sad Panagos is gone, but like, I would I'm not super super upset because we still retained a really good commit that could be a true freshman starter next year. So, especially with that entire D line uh, being seniors, especially. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's staff wise, and then looking into in terms of um, Auburn as a team. O C. I saw O C. Kirk was uh, put being considered for a Texas job at, as O C. But I really hope that nothing comes of that. I hope not. Keep Kirk in Minnesota. Kirk. Kirk. Yep, so uh, Auburn, like we looked at the stats earlier, they're a pretty balanced team in terms of uh, passing and rushing offense. Um, pretty stout defense as well. Um, looking at the Vegas line as well, uh, Minnesota is plus 7.5, uh, over unders at 53. Um, so Vegas is seeing like a one possession game. Um, I can certainly agree to that. Uh, I have no arguments. Um, what do you guys see from Auburn or at least from or the Gophers side that they'll be playing on uh, that uh, Wednesday, New Year's Day game? What do I see from them in terms of what? As an overall team, offense or defense or special teams either way. I know from our end for sure, Special teams is still not great. 
on our end. So I think that would worry me the most. Defense, I think, will be solid. And offense, because you gave Kirk Shiraka and Joe Rossi a bye week, essentially, to game plan the hell out of this game. So, Yeah, it for sure doesn't hurt. Extra week. I... I think it's going to be a really fun game to watch. I think I think we just have to soak in the fact that for once we are in the new year. And I I think that's a lot of it. I think a lot of it is just making sure that the players know that they're out there Doing something that not a lot of Gophers have been able to do in the past decades. We, we last went to a New Year's Bowl um, in 2014, and that was way back uh, during Jerry Kill's era here. And that's it. So it's it hasn't been common in recent history. So yeah. and not as much excitement too, because I I think. At the time, like, Jerry Kill didn't motivate an entire state. And then you see PJ getting college game day on the last game of the season. And then, like, almost every Minnesotan chanting row the boat in high schools and at workplaces, which we haven't seen much either in the last new, new, new millennium. So it's pretty good. All right. Um... I see an Auburn team that there are three losses. It will be a close game no matter what. But the only ranked team they beat this year wasn't wasn't that Alabama? Because they lost to Georgia by a possession. They lost to LSU by a couple. And then they lost to uh, Florida by, I think, like 11. So, I mean, you talk about well-balanced, yes, but you talk about... Our offense, and you, if you compare stats side by side, you, it's pretty obvious that our offense has produced a heck of a lot more in almost every single area, quarterback, running back, receiving. So I'm not saying Auburn's overrated by any means because they will still be a very stout offense and defense, but uh, don't get – don't get too high on those on those Tigers because it will be a one possession game either way. I'm down for that. Um, predictions then? Oh gosh, predictions for this? Ye. I... I think the over under is 53, so keep that in check. What's the uh, spread? Uh, just just the initial spread. I don't I think it was seven and a half, wasn't it? Yep. All right. Um, for them, I'm assuming. Yes. Yep. Since they are twelve and we're eighteen. I think if we are playing our best football, we can absolutely beat the spread. But I don't. Know that this Gophers team is quite ready to beat an SEC team straight up. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to say this because I'm optimistic, um, and I I love this team and we'll be there anyway. I'm going to say Golden Gophers will be on top, but it will be a 28. To twenty-four game, and we'll win on the last drive with Captain Morgan throwing a touchdown pass to Rashad Bateman or Ty Johnson to clinch the game or seal it. I'd I'd really love it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna turn it down. Uh, sure. Well, we both are averaging roughly 34 points a game, but Auburn is a little less 
generous on the defensive end and points allowed at 18.6 and us at 22.4. So I'm going to, as as much as I, oh, I don't want to say it. Damn. Um, oh. I was going to say 37. I'm going to say their defense comes up strong on the last drive and we just, we lose 37-30. I hate to say I, it, but I take it. I I think regardless if we lose, if we keep it close, that's still a, that's a quality loss, a uh, very very quality loss, and it's not something we should ever be hanging our heads about. Um, at the CFB committee, if Antoine didn't play, I'd be scared from my mind because that man can run our defense. If Thomas Barber wasn't playing, I would be scared because that man helps run our defense. I'm a little scared even though Kamal Martin isn't playing because he is so unique at the outside linebacker position. But knowing and seeing how well Mariano Sori Marin has played this year uh, in a lot of the games, I am a believer that he can fill in that role even if it's not uh, the most... I guess elite playing, but. What are you like? Prediction still? Yeah, what's your score? I'm going to go with uh, similar to Greg 34 28. Auburn I think, like I said, I think we can beat the spread. I can't see this Gophers team taking a win against an SEC team quite yet. But if we do... If we do, I will happily take it. I won't even be mad. For sure. Um, that's about it. Uh, yeah, pretty vanilla episode today for our listeners. Um, again, we're all tired. I'm drained from my senior project, finally. Uh, got oh, yeah? minus in the entire capstone, so we're good. Um, we love that. Wyatt's done for the semester, right? Woo! And then One semester law school down. Then Grip is just tired from life and work, I assume. Grip is tired from being tired. Dude, National Signing Day being up at 4 a.m., that was something else. Hashtag next time 20. Bruh, for real, we're, we got we got some dogs though. If anyone wants, um, uh, if anyone wants to know, we have some freaking dogs coming in with Ja Joiner. We have Jonathan Mann out of Rose Mount. Uh, we have Douglas Emelian. I forgot where exactly he's from, but he's like a three or four star receiver. And we all know PJ loves receivers, so. Yes, we um, do. We, we have a couple more, but I'm just saying you guys best be excited because some of these guys are starters. So That's good. Actually, since we're talking about recruiting, um, let's go to that right now. So on early signing period, um, we signed 24 players. Uh, two scholarship, or sorry, two walk-on. Well, 26. 26. Two of them were like... Preferred walk-on? Um... Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yep, so with that, we had a number 29th overall class in the country, uh, number 7 in the Big Ten. I thought it was 9. Um, I mean, 7 would be great. I think it's 7. If, mm. I think it, uh, accounting um, the scholarship ones, I would say, not the walk-ins as well. Oh, okay. Gotcha, so, gotcha. But with, I believe with them, um, it goes down to 9. But uh, slightly better than last year, but again, one of the better classes in Minnesota football history in terms of recruiting in the internet era. So um, I take the rankings with a grain of salt, but in terms of um, early enrollees, we got eight players coming on early. Uh, Mr. Freak of a running back, Mr. Ty Thomas from Topeka, Kansas, uh, was a three star recruit on some places, but four star on others. Um, this man is a savage at running back and he'll help hopefully complement Mo and the other running backs in his room next season. We we love that. 
We love running backs. And then next we have uh, Tyrell Lawrence on the offensive line from Mississauga, Ontario. Um, Big a, boy. A suburb in uh, Toronto. Um, uh, again, PJ's outreach, the, you know, recruit guys outside the country is doing pretty well as well. Like, uh, a big offensive lineman um, that hopefully hopefully is going to be standing near Daniel Fialele because this dude is big as well. Um, then next is Mel Kruder from Munich, Germany, defensive end. Um, I, saw that, I saw that he was from Germany, and I was just shocked for a minute. Yeah. Griffin, what do you know about him? Nothing at all. Uh, about which, which, sorry, which player? Mel Kruder from Germany. Uh, I know they were just kind of looking over in the over in Europe, and they were. Uh, I guess Germany has some has some good players, so they. I mean, I don't know too much about him specifically, but I know they were kind of looking at. You know, they're kind of going international with Australia and now Germany, but I guess they play some uh, similar football, and they have some. They've seen some people at camps when they come over here, so. Uh, they, they liked what they saw, and they want them, and I trust them. Yeah, I'll take PJ's word for it. Next up, we have Gage Keys on the defensive line um, from Hilliard, Ohio. Um, a decent uh, defensive lineman, uh, as far as I'm aware of. Um, but again, this game more bodies on that D line. Uh, another one that is a big name in this recruiting class was uh, Jaquandis Burns. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah. From uh, Terrell, Texas, at linebacker, a four-star recruit that um, was from the IMG Academy pipeline uh, to the University of Minnesota. Uh, 6'2", 205-pound linebacker. Um, I believe some people uh, remind, like, he's like a raw version of a Kamal Martin, as some people have identified him as. I think I certainly agree seeing his film, so it's pretty cool. Good. Uh, another early enrollee, Cody Lindenberg from Anoka, Minnesota, like 20 minutes from where I live. Um, oh, yeah. 6'2", 205-pound oh. linebacker as well. Uh, he ran the fastest 40 in, in some of the gopher camps he's been to. And we uh, pretty good. we love us a uh, a local boy. Yep. And also, uh, a character fit too, because um, you know some people have been getting pissed off, like why is some of these Minnesota recruits not coming to Minnesota? And then PJ says, well, if we if we don't get along, or you don't like this culture, or you don't fit with it, it's not gonna work. So. We get he, it's not. It's not like he neglects Minnesota recruits because we have a couple Minnesota recruits. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. But yeah, I'm Jonathan excited. Mann wanted to be a Gopher. Cody Lindenberg wanted to be a Gopher. Mm-hmm. The people that want to be here will be here. Yep. And Cody Lindenberg, I think, is going to be a fun project as well when he comes here. Uh, another player, uh, Abner Dubar, a safety from uh, Anna, Texas, or Anna, Texas. Um, not much I know about him, but it's going to be uh, awesome. And then our last dude coming in, uh, of these early enrollees, is Mark Crawford Punter from Perth, Australia, who is, um, I think, the top-rated international punter, according to ProKicker.com. 24-7 does not have any stats on him yet, but he has average punt of 49.86 yards with a hang time of 4.4 seconds. That ain't bad. Well, is this because another punter that root for since Jacob Herbert is going to be gone? Don't hurt me like this. Sorry, Wyatt. That's my boy. Hmm. What are we going to do without Jacob Herbert? He was an average punter at best, even though he was our boy. He was hey, 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 hey. A hey, little bit better than an average punter. He may have had the lowest average in the Big Ten, but our offense did not help them when they would just drive down and then stall, and then he's punting at the 50-yard line. Yeah. I mean, he's, he had his fair share of bad punts, but 
we also had PJ keep keep taking delay game penalties to give him that extra five yard cushion. <laughs> True. All right, um, that's about it in terms of early enrollees. But yeah, a solid recruiting class again from PJ and the staff. And um, so far, besides the rumor mill about offensive coordinator Kirk Shiraka, I don't think there's been anything regarding the rest of PJ staff leaving or getting poached off, right? Not that I'm aware of. From what I know, it's that was probably the only one of and I hope it doesn't importance. happen. I can live with that. I can absolutely live with that. This fine as a new D line coach. All right. He's uh, easier said than done with the young group. True. All right. Um, anything else? From this recruiting class, previewing Auburn game, or don't, or very few reminiscence of the Wisconsin game, or is that it for that? Trying um, not to reminisce on the Wisconsin game, you mean? Oh. Um, let's see. Iowa, the Minnesota-Iowa game moved to a Friday this year. That was interesting. Oh, crap. I hate it. Um, then PFF had a article about how all 80 college football bowl quarterbacks ranked, and Tanner Morgan came in at number 10. So I think that's... That's bold. Cool. Well, especially when you see Tanner doing those hip moves and leg work like Dak Prescott on Monday Night Football. <laughs> like, Tanner Morgan was above Jalen Hurts on this list. I was amazed. Oh. Oh. That's, uh, that's a bold, bold statement. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can get behind that one. Um, in terms of numbers, I think Tanner was pretty equal footing with Jalen Hurts, right? Am I wrong? What did that article say? I, I saw he was number ten, and the writer liked his uh, like Tanner's quick release when he throws the ball, especially as a quarterback. So I think yeah, it said like. Well, he has one of the nation's best receiving cores. He's done his fair share of heavy lifting. Richard Sophomore is the third highest graded quarterback in the country from week five on. Scouts are going to love his quick release, a prospect to keep an eye on. I mean, if I, I think if Tanner plays at Western Michigan and he didn't move his commitment uh, with PJ, he would be way, way, way more... Uh, Unknown than he is now, like more like a Mac level quarterback. Yeah, he'd be like a Mac level quarterback. He wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't have the visibility and, and uh, attention that he has now. With the, uh, I don't think anyone would have expected him to be a ninety five percent completion percentage and leading the Big Ten. Also, he's like the second team All Big Ten offense too, so. That's pretty cool. And then Anton Rinku Jr. is a unanimous All-American. Yeah, if that wasn't uh, unanimous, I don't know what else is. So, so yeah. yeah. Um, pretty good overall 2019 football season. And celebrating at the Tampa uh, Tampa Bay, um, Florida area for the Outback Bowl. Um, I cannot talk. Words are hard. So, Thank you for everyone listening to this episode of OPA Podcast. We're going to wrap it up tonight. And also to announce, we're going to be on hiatus um, for a few weeks. We need a break. Like, have a long break. Yeah. It's uh, it's one of those times where there's not just not a lot to talk about, you know? Yep. So we'll do that, but we'll for sure come back uh, for a couple episodes to recap the bowl game once it's over, uh, do anything else regarding uh, draft uh, stock with some of our go, uh, go for players, and then maybe talk about NFL and some basketball. Um, but from there, we'll be on hiatus. Hope we have something interesting to talk about in the NFL. True. And then uh, go from there. So thank you, everyone, for listening to Open Podcasts this season. Uh, we'll try our best to do a few more episodes during this next uh, half a year before the next um, 2020 football season. But, again, my name is Jason Ho, one of your co-hosts. Uh, I'm Wyatt Okers, another co-host. 
And I am Griffin most. And we'll see you all next time. And oh. Oh. Oh.